Hello and welcome. Today we're working on a stock and bond portfolio. What happens if we have different amounts of stock? So anywhere from 100% down to 0% or maybe 50% stocks, 50% bonds. And let's do it for the last 40 years. And this would be the years 1982 through 2021. I can calculate the future value and then the rate of return and then the standard deviation. And then we'll do a table that gives all Every 10%, it gives the rate of return and the risk, which is standard deviation, and then what the future value would have been. So let me erase this and we'll get started. Hello, my name is Jeff from Finally Learn, where I help you finally learn financial literacy. Okay, we have a blank template here. So all I've done is I built uh, the stock and bond portfolio what if analysis for the last 40 years. I make the background, the fill color blue, and I made the font color white. That makes it easy to see uh, that you've, you're working on this and making a, um, a nice looking table. So I'm going to type in 1000 for my investment and I formatted already for dollar signs. And I don't guess I need pennies, so let, I'm just going to try to get rid of pennies, which is completely fine. Now I have a little drop down list, so let me show you how this works and let me uh, show you where it is. At the bottom, I've typed in 100%, 90%, 80%, so on. And if you get this set up, you can type in 100%, 90%. Of course, I've formatted it for percentages. And if you highlight this and copy it, Excel will recognize the pattern. And so here are our possibilities on the stock portfolio. So what I need to do is this is called a conditional, I'm, not, I'm sorry, not a conditional format. This is data validation. So I'm going to go to data ribbon and then over here at data validation. Sometimes you might just see this little symbol to check and then a, um, a no symbol, you know, the, the red with the cross on it. So I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to clear uh, the data validation. I'm going to clear it. So now at the very top, I don't have this drop down list and you'd have to come up with, you know, what percentage uh, we're going to have for stocks or whatever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say data validation, data validation, and I want to use a list. So I want to drop down list. I don't want somebody to type in something because they might type in uh, something over 100% or they might type in something that's less than one or whatever. So the source is going to be this. I've just kind of hidden it somewhere out of range. And so I have a range that's going to be 100% all the way down to zero. And I put the 100% first because I want that to show up first. So now I have a drop down list that's 100. You can select 50 or 70 or 30 or zero. And so that's how it's going to function. So if somebody tries to type something in here, they try to type in 44, well, that's going to be data validation says, hey, uh, that's not an appropriate number. Okay. So if I have, um, let me do 50%. So then I can do the math. I'm going to do um, 1 minus the 50%, and that will give me the bond percentage. So what I have is, in this case, I'm assuming the stock portfolio is 50% of the total, and the bond is 50% of the total. So the total here is going to be 100%. So I'm going to add that up and do sum 100%. Okay. Now, that means I'm going to take the 1,000 which I'm going to make it absolute with dollar signs times 50%. And I'll do the same thing. Uh, I can copy that across. So I can do 500, uh, 1,000 times 50%. So you can see why I did absolute. So I could copy it across 1,000 times 50%. So if I change this to say 70% stocks, then it's 700 and 300. And my total that I've invested is the three, 700 uh, plus the 300. You can do the math that way. Or what you could do is you could uh, highlight it and use a keyboard shortcut or go to the home ribbon and use the auto sum. But remember the auto sum uh, function on, I'm using a Mac, so to me it's Command Shift T. And if you're on Windows, that's Alt and Equal. So that's auto sum. You can do things a little bit faster. Now, do we need the pennies? Probably not. So I'm going to get rid of the pennies at the very beginning. And so what we're going to do is, well, what if we start with a portfolio of, 
you know, 70% stocks or 100% stocks or 50 and 50. So let's do 50 and 50 and it'll be easy to see what happens and everything is going to be changed on that original investment. So what we're going to do is the original at the beginning of 1982, we put in 500 and 500 and then we just let them grow without rebalancing the portfolio. All right, so we start with the 500 times and over here on a different tab, one plus, I've got the returns of the stock market. In fact, before I finish that, I've got the returns of the stock market to 1928. I have a previous video where we, I did uh, the risk and return for all the years. But you might want to say, hey, that's great to look at the risk and return in the past, but could I take the past and estimate in the future? And that's what we're going to do here. So I'm going to do the what if, if you had the last 40 years of your return, that might be the best indication of what could happen in the next 40 years. You're 20 and you're thinking about what if I'm 60 or you're 30 and you're thinking about what if I'm 70. So what happens in a portfolio of just $1,000? Now, you can add more along the way, but I just want you to think about this. This is how you do this in Excel. So I'm looking at this, but I, I want 1982. So sometimes you have to highlight it and drag down or whatever. And you think, wait a minute, is this stocks and bonds and bills? And yes, it is. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to, if I can select at the very top, I can go to the view ribbon and it says freeze the top row. And what that does then is if I scroll down, you can always see the heading. And that's a nice way to handle a big, bigger data set because I want to start with 1982 and just these 40 years. That's plenty. I don't have to do all of the years back to 1928. Okay, so let's go back. Our stocks are going to be 500 times, start a parentheses, one plus, and I'm going to point to the returns, and the returns is 1982's return of 20.42%. Close the parentheses. Okay, I should be able to copy that across. Now it's going to be bonds. My second um, column is bonds. And so then I'm just going to do a total here. I'm going to use my Command Shift T or Alt equals and figure out the, the total dollar amount. That's the sum function. You can see that's just the sum function. I'm going to start making this where I don't have the pennies. Uh, if you want the pennies, you're welcome to, but some of the numbers are going to be so large the pennies are just not going to be important. The pennies are there, right? Just because you don't see them. That's one thing that people um, kind of forget about in Excel. Just because the pennies aren't there doesn't mean you don't have them. It's calculated. It only shows the full dollar amount if we do it that way. Okay, so um, we can calculate then based on these uh, numbers. It went from 500 to 602, from 500 to 664. We can calculate, and then we can copy that down for the remaining of the 40 years. So the previous number times, start the parentheses, 1 plus, go back to returns, and I need the 1983 number. Close the parentheses, and so that uh, is going to um, be $736. Copied across, um, and then we'll sum it. We can just copy this down to sum, and I'm, since I'm going to copy this one, I'm going to make this uh, dollar sign and zero decimal, so no pennies. Now, I should be able to copy this down all the way down for all 40 years. So which one is larger, the stock half of the portfolio or the bond half of the portfolio? If we go all the way down, your $500 investment would grow to 50000 and your $500 investment here would grow to $8,792, so about $8,800. So stocks have a much higher return over a long period of time. And so your portfolio of $1,000 has grown to $59,162. All right, so that's why we're doing this. And let's calculate the annual return. And so if we have a return of, uh, we have an amount of $1,266, subtract out the original $1,000, um, I'm sorry, let's divide, divide by the original 1,000, and we're going to get a return that's 126%, uh, but we take out the 1, the 1,000, and so it's really a 26% return, so we're going to do that minus the 1, so we get 26.62%, and we're going to do the second one. If we have 1,400 divided by the 1,266 minus 1, 
and we got a 12% return the next year. So we're going to copy the second year all the way down, and you can see some years we've lost money, right? So in 2008, we lost 19%. Okay, so let's calculate based on this portfolio, what is the total value at the end of 40 years? So we're going to go down to the bottom. This is the 59,000. So one way to look at this portfolio, it's a 50% stock, 50% bond portfolio. It's um, you, your initial $1,000 investment grows to 59,162 and some pennies that we don't care about, right? So what's our average return? Well, our average return here is going to be just the return of this column of numbers. So I'm going to start typing in average, and hit tab, and then I just want this. I don't have to do a, um, and I show sometimes you can drag, but there's a faster way. You can, if you start right here, you can do command shift down or control shift down and you select that entire column close your parentheses, and you're done. So the average return is something like 11.33%. Now, that's not really the way you, you um, do the compounded annual growth rate. CAGR is compounded annual growth rate. That's the official way to calculate uh, portfolio returns. And this is a compounded interest rate, uh, exponential rate, rather than a simple average it's always going to be a little bit less than the, um, the mean or the average return. All right, for our compound and annual growth rate, that's the way we calculate the returns. We're going to use the RRI function. So if you go up here to the FX, the function, we can search for RRI. That's one of the ones I used recently, so I'm going to click on it. I need the number of periods, so I'm going to do a count. I can count the number of years easily. Now, I said it was 40. Let's just verify that it was 40. So there we have, um, we have the 40 years. You can see how that works. And the present value is going to be the 1,000. Uh, not there, no. The present value is going to be the 1,000. And the future value is going to be 59,000. So we'll hit done. Yeah, so I think that looks correct. I have did a count. Now, if I want to verify, we can just type in 40, right? Or I can count the number of years. The present value is 1,000. The future value is 59,000. So this works out to be an annual rate of return, a compound annual growth rate, or CAGR, of 10.74%. Uh, now, we're worried about risk. We're worried about the risk. So this is the return, and these other things are looking at risk. Okay, so our standard deviation, one way to do it is what is the standard deviation of the portfolio returns? So I'm going to start typing in STD, and what you'll see is we want to use the standard deviation of, of the sample size, which is S, and I can go here and do Command Shift Down or Control Shift Down if you're on Windows, close parentheses, and so you can see here is our, um, our standard deviation, how risky that portfolio is. Now, is that good or bad? It depends. You can look at other ones. And so we'll do different rates of stock ownership, and you see it goes up with more stock and goes down with more bonds. So let's go back to 50-50. Now, the five worst years of our returns would be, um, we're going to use a function called small. So small, I need an array. So my array is going to be this 40 years. I need to make it absolute, so I'll make it dollar signs. And then I'm going to point to the one, point to the one. So what's my worst year? If I did a 50-50 bond uh, portfolio, then what's my worst year? My worst year is 19% loss. And so I can copy this down and figure out what is my the worst five years. 19%, 10%, 7, 3, and 3. So you know, there's a, there's a reason you might want to do 50% stock, 50% bond, or whatever. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to build a table that does it every time. So what you can do is you can keep moving this. Well, what if I had 70% stock? Well, you can see the value is higher, the return is higher, but the risk is higher. And our worst years are going to be higher than what they would be at 50-50. All right, so stocks, let's assume 
assume uh, we started um, with maybe uh, give myself an extra line here. Uh, let's start at 0% stocks and then 10% stocks and 20% stocks. And you can highlight this and let Excel copy it down until you get to 100. You can see that Excel is going to show you where to stop. And so here's what we need to do. We've given it one example, uh, and it can be wherever, at 50-50 or whatever, but you, every time you change this, everything gets updated. So what I want to do is I want Excel to build a table. Okay, so I'm going to point to the compound and annual growth rate, 10.74. Uh, the standard deviation is going to be uh, 11.39. Point to it, use a formula, because this is built on a formula, and the future value is going to be 59,000. Okay, now... This is a little function, and it's, uh, it may be new to you, but it's called a data table. By the way, one thing I've done on my view, um, I've taken out the grid lines, because sometimes the grid lines are helpful, sometimes, and I think here, I just want you to look at the data and not say, oh, it's, this is in Excel or whatever. And so sometimes it's a little bit cleaner if you don't use the grid lines or whatever. Certainly you can come back and put uh, lines around these boxes or whatever. Um, just a choice that you, you want to consciously make whatever you want to do. Now, I'm going to highlight all this information, but not the label at the very top, not the headings. I've only highlighted starting here and everything. So I need to give it one example. So this is under the uh, data ribbon. The data ribbon under what if analysis is called data table. So this is what's called a one variable data table. I don't have a row input, but I've got a column input. So it says, Hey, for 0 and 10 and 20, I want you to calculate these numbers if this, the number of uh, stocks percentage is 0 or 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 or 50. We did one right in the middle. We just have to give it one example. And so where is our column input? Well, that's the 50% at the very beginning. So I'm going to hit OK. And what happens is at any level, at stocks at 0% all the way at 100%, and you know the other percent is, is bonds, it'll calculate the compound and annual growth rate. It'll calculate the standard deviation, which is risk. So this is return column, and this is risk column, and this is the future value. Now, we only, the very first line, you, you can kind of ignore that first line. That's one example, <clears throat> but we're going to look at this um, and, and in fact, I think I can highlight this and put, I might be able to put uh, borders around it so you can kind of look at it, and that, that's helpful. So you see, with increasing stocks, the return goes up, but the risk goes up, okay? With increasing stocks, the, um, the risk goes up. Now, interesting thing, if you had 100% bonds, you have some risk. It actually goes down a little bit if you have um, some stocks, and in fact, you could have 30% stock portfolio that'd be less risky over the last 40 years than 100% bond portfolio. But the more stocks you have, the higher the expected return, even though the risk goes up. So remember, one of the rules in finance is, hey, risk and return go together uh, in a large degree. So that's how you do this whole entire thing. So let's look at it. What if you said, look, I really believe stock investing is for me, so 100%. It doesn't change the table here. It changes, well, the portfolio return um, would be higher. The portfolio future value would be higher and so on. You say, but I'm going to reduce risk a little bit. And maybe you do 80% stocks, 20% bonds. And so you have $84,000 of return. And um, your compounded annual growth rate was like 11.7 rather than it could be maybe 12.2. But just a little bit difference in return can make a difference between 84000 and 100000 So it helps to see what happens over time with this portfolio. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.